Hey guys, Mark here, and today I'm gonna to answer a bunch of your questions. I believe this is the first Q&A sort of video I've done on this channel, and a lot of you submitted some really good thought-provoking questions actually about Apple, questions about how I started here on YouTube, there's some questions about cars, which I'm always happy to talk about, and I'm just excited to drop right into answering these, so let's get right to it. Question number one, what's your favorite gadget you picked up last year? Uh, right off the top of my head, the first thing that stands out to me is the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2. That is an incredible phone. I didn't end up actually keeping it because that thing cost me about 3,000 Canadian dollars and in the middle of a pandemic, that's just way too much money to let go of. But that is the gadget that stood out to me most in the past year. They put an insane amount of work into making the Fold 2 so many times better than the first version, and I loved it. It wasn't perfect, but it was extremely impressive. Why did you decide to start a YouTube channel and how did you go about preparing for it? I think about how I'd answer this question a lot actually, and to be honest, I don't really have a great answer for it. Going through high school and university, I really took a liking to cinematography and filmmaking, and I always had an interest in tech, so one day after watching some reviews on YouTube, I just thought it was time to start my own tech channel. There was no real preparation for it because I had already had a lot of the gear that I needed from shooting short films, so I just dove right in. Boring answer, I know, but that's how I started. Personally, do you like Android phones or iOS phones better? Ah yes, the good old Android versus iPhone debate. For me personally, the answer to this question actually fluctuates from year to year, and occasionally even month to month. Sometimes an Android phone will release with a cool new feature that'll make me want to switch over to Android, and then Apple will do something with the iPhone that I've been waiting for for forever, and I'll just switch back. I currently carry around both an iPhone 12 mini and a Samsung S21 Ultra, but my main phone right now is the S21 Ultra, so if you asked me right at this moment, I'd probably say Android, but ask me again in a few months and I'll probably have a different answer for you. Thinking about this a little bit harder does bring an important point to mind though, and that's the concept of brand loyalty. Now, personally, I believe that you shouldn't be loyal to any brand, whether it be Samsung, OnePlus, Apple, or anyone else, because these are for-profit companies and they will do what's in their best interest, not yours. They're not loyal to you in the slightest. Sometimes what's in their best interest is giving you what you want, but at the end of the day, they will do whatever is necessary to feed their bottom line, whether that be removing features you love or increasing prices. So keep your mind open, buy the products that are best for you, no matter what the brand is, and don't be a fanboy. If you had an unlimited budget to buy one car, what would it be? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I really love cars. I really, really do. And I think if I had a crazy amount of money, I'd probably retire and open one of those car museums just so that I can own a lot of really cool old cars. But for right now, if I was suddenly given a bunch of money just to buy one singular car, it would probably be the Porsche Taycan Turbo S. I love Porsches, I love electric cars and bleeding edge tech, and the Taycan is just an electric Porsche with the futuristic dial turned all the way up to 11. It's definitely not the most practical car, but hey, you didn't say it had to be practical. My dream combo that I hope to someday own though is the Tesla Performance Model 3 for my daily driver and a 1974 Porsche 911 as like a fun weekend car. Are you a full-time YouTuber now? Yeah. Why is Apple so slow to adapt to clearly useful features like an in-screen fingerprint sensor, a punch hole camera, high refresh rate, or bigger battery? This is actually a really good question even though it's framed rather uh, angrily, I guess. When I was going through business school, there was this concept we learned about called the late movers advantage. And this is a strategy that Apple has been using for a number of years now. In a nutshell, a late mover is a strategy where the business uses a kind of wait and see approach where they'll sit back and they'll observe what the competition does before they act. They'll deliberately wait and see how the market responds to innovation before they jump into anything themselves. This provides three main advantages. Number one is that they get to see how viable a certain innovation is in the market. In the case of Apple, they might sit back and see how people respond to the high refresh rate displays, for example. If it seems like a feature that people like, they can respond by bringing it to their phones. But if nobody cares, then it's no loss to them. They didn't have to spend money on anything. And that's the second main advantage. There is much, much less risk. A company like Samsung that routinely tries to push innovation in the smartphone sector takes on a 
lot of risk by being first to the market with a lot of their features. They have to put an incredible amount of research and development to create these new untested features, which naturally costs a lot of money. The third main advantage is that the late movers get to see where the first movers went wrong, and then they have the chance to correct the first movers' mistakes to try and make a better product. You can bet that if Apple is actually working on a folding phone like the leakers say they are, they just learned a whole lot from Samsung's mistakes over the past few years. Of course, there are some downsides to the late mover strategy as a whole, like taking a lot of hits in the PR department for copying features that the first movers pioneered, but given that Apple is one of the richest companies in the world, I'd say it's working pretty well for them. What's your favorite smartphone feature that most people don't care about, like underscreen fingerprint, high refresh, or pop-up camera, etc.? Probably high refresh rate displays. I know a whole lot of people that can't even tell the difference between 60 hertz and 120 hertz, but to me, it feels like going from an old tube TV from the late 90s to a modern 4K TV. What are your hopes for the next iPhone SE? Given that the last iPhone SE before the current one was made in 2016, we could be about four years out from another one, but if past trends are anything to follow, I suspect it'll be another parts bin phone for Apple, which means it could have the body similar to an iPhone X or XR, and whatever the current SoC is for Apple at that time will be. That's not a bad thing though, I'm sure it'll be a significantly cheaper phone with great internal specs like the SE has now, I just hope that they decide to stick a better battery in there this time. What do you think about the Apple ecosystem in terms of how it traps the customer into buying Apple everything? And what do you think about the product's prices? Are they too high or are they okay? The Apple ecosystem has been referred to a trap a lot of the time, you're right, but I don't really think it's fair to call it that. Trap is such a negative connotation that implies that the people that are deep within the Apple ecosystem are just being held against their will and they hate it there. When in fact, a lot of the time, the opposite is true. The people that go out and buy Apple everything and are deep within that ecosystem do so because most of them love it there. The reason that the Apple ecosystem works is because it's good. Great, even. You can call that Stockholm Syndrome if you want, but I prefer to think of it as the natural outcome of a very well-designed ecosystem. As for the prices, well, uh, that's a whole other discussion that I think I'll save for later. Let me know if you want to see a video on that in the comments below. Do you think the OnePlus 9 would be spot on in the camera department? I hope so. I have no idea because I don't have that phone in hand yet, but I really hope the Hasselblad collaboration is more than just a marketing ploy and they actually did improve the cameras because the camera is something that I always like to complain about or pick on in OnePlus phones traditionally. I'm holding off my excitement for now though until I get the phone in my hands because I know how collaborations like this can be used for the sole purpose of marketing with no real benefit, but I am hoping for a set of great cameras this time around. Do you ever burn out? What inspires you to keep creating? Yes, all the time especially now that there's a pandemic going on. Burnout is a very real thing in all professions, not just this one, but when you're self-employed and you're relying on yourself to make money, there is that extra level of stress that lays on your shoulders, and it's not easy. That said, I'm incredibly grateful for this job and for all of you for watching my videos because it means that I get to do what I love doing and provide for myself. And that's what inspires me to keep creating, the fact that I genuinely love being here on YouTube. I might get exhausted and take a break for a few days every so often, but I keep coming back to create because that's what I love to do. I'd love to get to more of your questions, but in the interest of not making this video 20 minutes long, I think I'm gonna end it there. Thank you for sending me all of your questions. I really genuinely enjoyed reading them and responding to them, and I hope you got some enjoyment out of this video too. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to support my channel, and as always, have a great day.